is the VPN function. This new feature allows you to establish a VPN tunnel between two protector units. Through a VPN tunnel, the two subnets under the two protector become visible to each other. If we want to create a tunnel, we can go here, VPN, VPN tunnels, and here we can see the main VPN window with the list of already defined VPN tunnels and here a control panel. If we want to create a new tunnel, we can click here, add a new VPN tunnel, otherwise we can click on the tunnel name to edit the parameter of an existing tunnel. Here we have one tunnel already defined, which is London Boston. This name must be exactly the same as the name of the tunnel on the other endpoint. We can go here to the second protector. Here I have created the second endpoint of the same tunnel. Here we can edit the definition of the same tunnel on the other endpoint. We can see that the names are exactly the same, including the upper and lower cases. On the first protector, we see that I have defined this endpoint as master endpoint, while the second protector is not master endpoint. Keep alive means that the tunnel must be on whenever the VPN service is on. The same is on the other protector. Here we have to define the IP addresses of each endpoint. Then on each endpoint we have to enter the IP addresses of the local and remote subnet and then we have to enter the public IP of the remote endpoint. This IP is the same IP that we find as local IP on the second protector. Then here this subnet is defined as subnet of the remote protector. So all these parameters have to be entered in agreement with each other, as well as the pre-shared key, which must be exactly the same between the two protectors. Of course, one of the protectors must be defined as master, and the second one must not be defined as master. The difference is that a master endpoint, when you turn on the service, will actively try to establish a connection with the other endpoint. Instead, a branch endpoint, when you turn on the service, will enter in a wait state for incoming connections from the head endpoint. Now we can save parameters on both protectors and we can try to start the service. Here, here we are on the branch endpoint. We can enable the VPN. Here we see some clocks, which means that the protector is trying to pull up the service. Okay, now we have this branch endpoint waiting for incoming connection. If we go to the main protector and we enable the service, this protector will start the tunnel with the other endpoint. Here we are, the tunnel is active. If we go to the second protector, we see that the tunnel is active as well here too. On the protector you can define more than one tunnel and you can add another one by clicking here. At this point it is important to notice that the difference between this button and the flag keep alive in this window is that if you uncheck this flag you will shut down this tunnel instead if you click this button you will shut down all the tunnels in the protectors 